Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine, across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them, or see them on our website, bobweberautomart.com, we can save you between five and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase. Welcome into another edition of Sports Junkie, Simon Talk Preps Basketball. Steve Sparky, fight for along with Gary Wolfel of the Racine Journal Times. We'll start off first with girls basketball on a team that I talked about last week, St. Cat's Girls Basketball, which, again, we talked about last week. It's a balanced scoring attack that St. Girls, uh, the St. Cat's Girls has right now at this point, which makes them very difficult to stop. I am so impressed. You came out with this font of knowledge right, a bit, right away. I mentioned it last you, week. You did, you did. They, and, and you're absolutely right. They have three girls that are averaging uh, close to double figures, and Sabrina still is leading it. She's averaging 14 points, and she's really spearheaded the attack. And then they also have another girl named Kennedy Wiles, who was right around 14 or 15 yep. herself. And then you still have Annie Bucallian, who is... Uh, Averaging right around nine or ten points, and you throw in Ellie LeCount, whose father used to work at the Journal Times, so we're giving you a plug. Oh, nice! You know it, what do they call that when you know? Not it's not guilt by association. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 it's something, but uh, yeah, they they have been terrific. I think what are they now? Seven, six, and zero. And you know what? Also, also they have done that's really impressive. They are blowing out people. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not like they're winning by three, four, or five points. I, I think of their uh, six wins, four have been by 14 points or yeah. more, and they had a couple 20-point blocks. And it's kind of interesting because they, they lost some good players last year, and people thought, hey, Sean Brady, the coach at St. Catharines, is going to go through kind of a rebuilding year. But uh, Stilo, you know, hasn't missed, missed a beat, and... Uh, uh, Wiles has really stepped up. She's been really terrific. So, uh, so far, so good for the Angels. So far, so good, yeah. Say sorry cats sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I would never interrupt you. No. Say yeah. cats girls uh, off to no, interrupt you. Yeah. <laughs> Say cats girls off to a quick start, as is the Union Grove boys basketball team. They're off to a good start. As Can well. I interrupt you one, one, one sure. thing? I want to go backtrack a little bit, back to St. Catharines. That conference is really good. That, that Metro Classic sure conference? Yeah. I mean, you, you talked about St. Catharines. I mean, everybody just assumed that Prairie was going to be the elite team of the conference, and they are. I mean, St., uh, the Hawks are very good with Gabby and everybody else. But St. Catharines, I, I think, has a legitimate shot to play with them, you know, at least giving them a run. And then you also have Kenosha St. Joseph, so you have, you know, sure. three pretty good teams. right? St. Joe's girls, is, are they doing as well as the St. Joe's boys? Because boys is playing, obviously, very well as well. You know what, I uh, didn't realize this, and shame on me. You know who the head coach is at uh, Kenosha St. Joe's? Yeah, Jose Winston. Yeah, yeah the, the guy is one of the best high school From players. From Vincent. And, and I'll tell you what, they, they played uh, St. Catherine's Boys the other night at the uh, John F. McGuire Gymnasium, if you didn't know the name yeah. of the place. And uh, they, I was very impressed. They, 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 they're very disciplined on offense. They get after you. They're, they're not overly talented by any stretch. But they're winning. But uh, Jose's done just a terrific job of uh, bringing that team together. Yeah, he's done a really good job St. Joe's boys. Union Grove boys off to a good start as well. I think people knew that they were going to be good, but I don't know if people thought they were going to be as good as they are. Yeah, precisely, yeah. They're 7-1, and one, and their one loss was to McGuanago, and they were actually leading in the third quarter against McGuanago. Really? Before, yeah, they fell behind. So they could easily conceivably be undefeated. 8-0. Very good. You brought your A game this morning. Yeah, I'm on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the thing that stands out with Union Grove, I, I talked to uh, Broncos coach Dave Pettit, you know, before the season started, and he told me he said, "Yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty good team." And me, being the cynic, said, "Okay, well, they're going to be a good team, but I don't know how good. They're really good. They, they they've come out of the blocks really strong." How good is that conference? I think it's okay. Not nothing, nothing special. But they haven't played a lot of teams. In fact, I don't think. Well, have they played a couple teams in their conference? Right. But um, man, they're, they're senior laden. Okay, I think four of their starters are seniors. That always helps. A absolutely. And then they have two of their top reserves are seniors, and in, including Cody Walters, who uh, I think is averaging somewhere around you know eleven points a game, and uh, has led them in scoring on a couple occasions. But 
you know what I really like about them is their balanced scoring attack. You know, we're talking about St. Catherine's yeah. girls. I mean, here again, you got you got a you don't have a superstar, but you have some good players. Alex Hale is averaging 14 points. Grant Beck is averaging 13 points. Andrew Kozakowski is averaging 11, and he hasn't really gotten on track yet. I mean, this is a guy that they thought coming into the season was going to be their go-to guy. And uh, so, I mean, for him to be the third leading scorer on this team, you know, certainly bodes well. For the future. For the future for the Broncos. No question about that. So that's Union Grove boys. Uh, the other team that we seemingly talk about every week on these videos, because they're so darn good, is Racine Case. Um, and on the ride over here to do these videos, Gary Wolfel proclaims to me, hey, guess what? Case has another <laughs> weapon. And I, okay, who, what? I mean, as if they need another weapon. Right. You know, I mean, this team just, you know, scores 70, 80 points without even, you know, putting forth any uh, effort, you know. But uh, they, they got a player named Davison Scott. He's a junior, and uh, he's emerged. I mean, nobody was talking about this guy at the beginning of the season, at least outside of the program. But the one thing he does is he's an excellent perimeter shooter. And, and if you look at Case, they, they got a bunch of slashers. They got a good inside game, but their outside game is suspect. And I think, what, who did they play a couple weeks ago, or a week ago? Kenosha Bradford, maybe? Yeah, when, they when, killed Bradford. When they went in for Scott, I think, had seven three-point shots in that game. And now, granted, it was a runaway game, but if he can provide them with any consistency yeah. from the perimeter, uh, man, I'll tell you what, Case is, Case is loaded for bear. And they just lose a game uh, at Snow Jam over the weekend, does Racine Case. But, uh, again, that's a team from out of state. Not really a bearing on anything here in the state, but a good test for Racine Case either way. By the way, I wanted to throw one other thing uh, at you before we wrap up this segment. The WIA has instituted a new rule this year. Have you heard? No. The 40-point rule. Which is what? You get yeah, it's basically it's a, a running clock? After the fourth quarter. Started, started right. the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, I didn't hear that. And, and uh, I'm not sure if there's been any teams that have it. I would assume you know Case had it last week against Bradford. But well, what's your take on that? Do you like I'm it? fine with it, yeah. Absolutely. No problem with it whatsoever. It should be at halftime. At halftime? Mm -hmm. It's a 40-point lead at oh, halftime okay, around the running but, clock. And I, I, I tend to agree with you on that. And Do if you, you cut it to within mm -hmm. 20, then the clock goes back to normal or something like that. The, the, the only thing I think it hurts is uh, getting all your kids into the game. If, if you, have, you know, have timeouts and everything, I think it gives them more of a chance to play more minutes. Unless you really dump them right at halftime, you know. 